To estimate the area under a graph, you must first separate it into equal width shapes. So you can see here we've got a speed time graph and I've already split it into four separate shapes that are one second, in this case, wide. Now, your specific question will probably tell you the number of intervals or the number of strips to use. In that case, just take the total length that it spans. So for example, if this said eight strips instead, I know that this is, it goes from zero to four. So splitting that into eight, it would make sense to split it every 0.5 seconds. All I've done is, is four divided by eight. So split it into as many strips or intervals as the question specifies. In this case, we're gonna use four strips. Then what we need to do is form some shapes that we know how to work out the area of. For example, at the moment, we've got a sort of rectangle of a weird curved bit on the end for this section, which we don't really know how to work out the area for. So what we can do is turn them into common shapes. Normally, rectangles, trapeziums, and triangles. So doing that for this case, all I'm doing is connecting the start of the interval to the end of the interval. So you can see for this first section, we've just got a triangle, and then for every other section, we have a trapezium, which by now you should be able to work out the area of those. So we can label a few of these. Let's say this is A, let's say this is B, C, and D. And working out the area of A, we've got a triangle whose width is one. Remember the width of all of these is just one. The height goes from zero up to, well, you can go across to there, which is 4.4. So each little square on this graph is worth 0.4 because if you'll notice, a big square goes up two from eight to 10 is two, and there's five little squares in between. Two divided by five is 0.4. So one little square is worth 0.4. So this line here corresponds to 4.4. So we have a triangle with a height of 4.4 and a width of one. So to work out the area of that, we're gonna do one times 4.4. And then remember for a triangle, we have to half it like that, so that's 2.2. Next, we can work out the area of B. So remember for a trapezium, we need the length of the parallel sides. So in this case, we need the length of this side, which is gonna be 4.4 because that starts where A ends. And we need the length of this side, which is gonna be 6.4. Remember you add those two, so 4.4 plus 6.4, and then you divide by two and times by the width or the height of the trapezium. In this case, it's gonna be a width just by the way it's laid out, which in, again is just one because it goes from one second to two seconds. Working this out gives you 5.4. From there, we can work out C. So again, this starts where B ended. So the first height of the parallel side is gonna be 6.4. And then the second one corresponds to this point here, which is roughly 7.8, I would say, because it's halfway in between the two little squares. So plus 7.8. You may get a slightly different reading there, but it's important to note that the actual answer on the mark scheme will have a range because everyone will, will draw it slightly differently and read it ever so slightly differently. So as long as you're roughly using the correct values, you will still get the marks. And then we'll divide that by two again because it's trapezium and then times by the width of the trapezium in this case and again that's one and this one gives us 7.1 finally d we need the height here first of all but again that's just the same as the end of c so that's 7.8 plus the height here which i'm going to say is nine because it's halfway in between these ones here, again, you might read it ever so slightly differently, but as long as they're pretty similar to each other, you'll be fine. So add nine to that, divide it by two, and then times by the width of the trapezium, which again is one. So that gives us 8.4. So we have four separate sections of the graph with four different areas. Now all we need to do is add those up. So we're gonna do 2.2 plus 5.4 plus 7.1 plus 8.4. Adding all of those up gives us 23.1. Then we're gonna to need to add some units to this. So what we should do is have a look at the units on the y-axis and have a look at the units on the x-axis. Then remember you're effectively timesing these two units together because you're doing base times height if it was a rectangle 
or trapezium, we're still finding an average of the height and then times in by the width. So we're going to times the units together. So we're doing meters per second and then we're times in by seconds. So effectively, you've got meters divided by seconds and then times by seconds. So the seconds cancel out, leaving us with just meters. For your graph, it may be a different unit. Just remember, you just need to times the two units on the different axes together. If you found this video useful, why not try the topic test on our learning platform? Here, you can answer a series of questions and get instant feedback on how you've done in a written format that explains all the steps to solve the problem. So in this case, you can see a written solution here with an image explaining what's being done in terms of the area under the graph and then the calculations being made.